This is part 45 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss creating a simple image slideshow using jQuery. This is continuation to part 44, so please watch part 44 before proceeding. Here is what we want to achieve. We want to include these two buttons, start slideshow, stop slideshow. When we click start slideshow button, the slideshow should start, and when we click stop slideshow, the slideshow should stop. So let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. This is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. At the moment, this is how the page looks like. To keep this example simple, I'm going to remove these two drop-down lists and these two buttons. So let's get rid of this HTML from the page. And let's, and let's also remove the corresponding jQuery code. So from the jQuery ready function, I'm going to remove all the jQuery code. So within the jQuery ready function, we don't have any jQuery code at the moment. So let's save the changes. And when we reload this page, notice that the two drop-down lists and the two buttons are removed. Now, the first step is to include these two buttons. So just before the image element, I'm going to include an input element of type button. Let's give it an ID. Let's call this btn start slideshow. And the value on the button is going to be start slideshow. So let's make a copy of the button. And let's change the ID of this button to btn stop slideshow. And the value on the button is going to be stop slideshow. Let's include two HTML break elements. Save the changes. Let's reload this page. And notice that we get those two buttons. And within our jQuery ready function, I'm going to create four variables. In a bit, you'll understand the purpose of these variables. So the first variable is going to be image URLs, and this is going to be an array. The second variable is going to be interval ID. And the third variable is going to be btn start. So this variable will hold a reference to this button that is btn start slideshow button. So that's the ID of the button. So let's use the jQuery ID selector to find that button. Similarly, let's create another variable to hold a reference to stop slideshow button. The ID of the stop slideshow button is btn stop slideshow. The next thing that we want to do is loop through these thumbnail image elements retrieve the source attribute value, that is the image URL of each image, and then push that URL into this image URL array. So to loop through all these thumbnail image elements, I'm going to use a jQuery ancestor descendant syntax. So notice all these image elements are nested inside a div element with ID div container. So find an element with ID div container. And within that, we have image elements nested. So give me all those image elements. So then we're going to use this each function to iterate over each image element. And as we are iterating over, we want to call a function. So now I'm going to use this image URLs variable that we have created, so which is an array. Into that, we want to push the source attribute value of each image element. So I'm going to use push method. And to refer to the element that we are currently iterating over, we're going to use this keyword. And then we want the source attribute value. So we are using the ATDF function specifying the name of the attribute as source. So this is going to retrieve the image URL of the image element that we are currently iterating over. And we are passing that to push method push method is going to push that into this variable image URLs, which is an array. So by the time this code is executed within this array, we have all these image URLs. Next, I'm going to create a function. So let's call this function set image. Within this function, I'm going to create a variable. Let's call this main image element. So basically, this is going to hold a reference to 
this main image element. And the ID of the main image element is main image. So let's use the jQuery ID selector and find that main image element. Now, we want to find the URL of the image that is being currently displayed within the main image. So let's name the variable current image URL. So that's the URL of the image that is being currently displayed within the main image. And to get that, we can use the ATTR function and we want the source attribute value. So the name of the attribute is going to be source. Okay, so we got the current image URL that's being displayed within the main image. Now what we want to do is we want to find the index position of that image URL within this array, this image URLs array. Keep in mind this image URLs now contain all these URLs. And the image that is being displayed with the main image element is one of them. So we want to find the index of the image that's being currently displayed within the main image. So we want to find that index, you know, from this array that is the main uh, image URLs array. So to do that, I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call this current image index equals, I'm going to use jQuery in array function. And to this function, the first parameter is the element, you know, whose index we want to find out. And the element is current image URL. And the next one is the array itself. And the array is this one, image URLs. So basically, this function is going to return the index of this element within this array. So if the current image index is equal to image URLs dot length minus one. So if that condition is true, then I'm going to initialize this current image index to minus one. Now, if this condition is a bit unclear at the moment, don't worry, in a bit, this will be much clearer. Okay? So, if the current image index is equal to image URLs dot length minus one. So at the moment, if you look at the thumbnail images, we've got five thumbnail images. That means, image URLs dot length will be five, five minus one is four, right? So if the current image index is four, that means we are displaying this last image within the main image element. So when if, if it is the last image, then we want to start again from the first image, okay? So I am setting the current image index to minus one deliberately because, you know, when we are going to set the next image that we want to display in the main image will increment the current image index by one. Okay, so I'm going to find the main image element and I'm going to use the ATTR function and we want to set the source attribute value and we want to retrieve the source attribute value from this image URLs array, right? So image URLs and this is an array, so we need to specify the index position, you know, of the image URL that you want. And this current image index, you know, contains that position, but we need to increment that by one. Okay? So this current image index will have the value or the index of the image that is being currently displayed but then we want to increment it by one so we get the next image and that's what we want to display within the main image element. Okay? So let's save the changes. Now, we have two buttons, that is Start Slideshow and Stop Slideshow. So when we click Start Slideshow button, that's when we want the slideshow to start. So find the button by ID. The ID of the Start Slideshow button is btn start slideshow. We have already, you know, 
found that fr from the DOM and we are storing it in this variable so I'm going to use that variable so btn start dot click so when a click event is triggered we want to call a function and what do we want to do we want to start the slideshow so to start the slideshow you know we want to call this function and once the slideshow has started you know we want to automatically cycle through the images within the main image element right so I'm going to use set interval you know JavaScript function we discussed the set interval function in detail in part 34 of JavaScript tutorial so what is this function going to do it's going to execute a specified function repeatedly at specified time interval let's say for example we want the duration for each image you know to change is maybe half a second so we want the set image function to be called every half a second right so I'm going to use this set interval function and the function that we want to call is set image so this is the name of the function and we want to call that function every 500 milliseconds and you know this function is going to return an identifier and we are going to store that identifier within this variable interval ID so that's the reason we have created that variable so interval ID equals whatever this function returns so this is the identifier of the repeated action right so once the slideshow has started we want to disable start slideshow button so to refer to the start slideshow button I'm going to use this keyword and then I am going to use this um, attribute function and I want to set disabled attribute to disable and if at all if the disabled button is disabled I mean stop slideshow button is disabled we want to enable that because the slideshow is in progress now so let's find btn stop and we want to remove attribute disabled alright similarly when we click the stop slideshow button we want to stop slideshow so btn stop dot click we want to call a function when that event is triggered and we want to stop the slideshow so to stop the slideshow we want to cancel the repeated execution of set image function now notice that when we call the set interval function we are storing the identifier of the repeated action within this interval ID so we can use this identifier to cancel that repeated action and to cancel that repeated action we are going to use another JavaScript function clear interval and to this function we need to pass the interval ID that we want to cancel so interval ID so this is going to stop this slideshow so clear interval will cancel the repeated action so once we have stopped the slideshow the slideshow button itself should be disabled so I'm going to make a copy of this so disable you know the current button which is the disable uh, stop slideshow button and we want to enable start slideshow button so I'm going to say btn start dot remove attribute disabled and when the page first loads we want stop slideshow button to be disabled so here I'm going to call you know the, the ATTR function which is going to disable stop button on the initial page load alright so that's all there to it let's save the changes let's go ahead and reload this page and look at this when the page first loads stop slideshow button is disabled now when we click start slideshow look at that the slideshow starts right so the image within the main image is changed every 500 milliseconds if you want to display that for a longer duration just change this duration here 
Okay, so now when we go ahead and click stop slideshow, look at that, this slideshow should stop and notice stop slideshow button is disabled and start slideshow button is enabled now. So when I click start slideshow again, this slideshow should start where we stopped it. So it should next display these tulips image. So look at this, display tulips and then it goes through the rest of the images. Thank you for listening and have a great day.